Uh, what you're about to see is an integration of two lessons from Unit 1. Um, as a process of getting to, to get my kids where they need, really need to be, um, we do what we call a scaffolding type of process. Um, they were to, uh, like we have here, they are given this real world scenario or whatever. They are made to be familiar with that. But the main thing is that they need to know what their role is. So their role here will be student representative, wherein um, the board is about to make some new rules about uh, school policies. And they will take in consideration what the students have to say, but they have to be effective. So the first thing that we had to do for them in order for them to write this argumentative, and I kind of changed it a little bit and I called it a proposal. So in order for them to write a, an effective proposal or argumentative paper, that they had to find out, well, what makes a good argument? What, what strategies will I need to use in order for what I have to say, my perspective, to be considered by the board members, since how that is the audience. So we started, first of all, with rhetorical devices. And I chose to teach them those two rhetorical devices through Disney movies. And so they learned uh, the different rhetorical devices with the ethos, the pathos, and our logos, and some figurative language and some other uh, terms that they learn how to use within what they were doing on a daily basis. And with that, uh, they had to, to do some research themselves and had to do some short pieces using uh, the different writing strategies such as a uh, pathos, uh, such as um, praises and race and uh, some other things that we put in place. But those are the main two that I thought that we needed to zero in on as we did not want to overwhelm them with so many uh, things. And so we started with that. And uh, so the, the students have been uh, interacting with that, with the different writing pieces, the, the research that they've been doing with the different text. They've been in their collaborative groups sharing that or whatever. They've been doing their writing, submitting that to turn it in or whatever. And so now, if you will see, later on, they are at the culmination of Unit 1. And it's our reflection piece. And what we did with that, we just decided that we would reflect through um, going through uh, our standards, our learning targets, uh, naturally our essential questions, and our, our work sessions. And so I divided them up into different groups, giving them a, a, a different day and what they were supposed to learn for that day, that learning target, and their writing session, and we talked about it. It was supposed to inform me as a teacher, and it was supposed to inform them as students as to what they could do better or what I could do better. So we have here, uh, what you're about to see, is just an a, a integration of these different pieces, and then we culminate with the final um, uh, session that we do with the individual uh, grouping. Even though we did not do a lot in this video with the, with the counterclaim, because I, I chose to do that a little bit later on because I would like to, to teach that a little bit more in depth, even though we did do it in the guided part of the, uh, the, the argumentative essay that they had to do for us. And they did do one on writing on demand by themselves or whatever. But I think just from interacting with them on a daily basis with when they had to use that, I need to do a little bit more in depth teaching on that. So, I, so possibly, uh, the next video that we would do uh, to show the progression of the writing of the students, we would go into a little bit more of the counter. So you won't see a whole lot of that talked about in uh, this particular video, but we would definitely do more uh, in the next one. Okay, because that post-assessment is what we do after we finish the entire unit. Okay, what did you learn? We had a pre-test and then we had a post-test. What we're doing with that, we're trying to, um, what we're doing, we're looking at the growth between what you knew when we first started as opposed to what you got out of it or what you learned at the end of the unit, okay? So you were supposed to be able to do then, your I can again when somebody will say it for me. So what's the I can again? I can use my learning strengths to prepare for unit one post-assessment. 
Okay. All right. I, I, I think you were following in there. Okay. All right. Okay. So now, did y'all hear what she said? Can y'all? Can you? Okay. All right. So let's see. How did, how did we get there? Well, that day, let's see. What did we do for Wednesday in our work session? All right. Well, this is what we did. We did independent, independent reading, literal and nonfiction text that interests you, uh, and you were supposed to share with the class, well, whoever was in your, in your group or whatever, okay? We had some vocabulary that day, the vocabulary on, on the board. We talked about some vocabulary. Remember when we had the vocab quiz and uh, just a little fun with that, okay? And then you were supposed to reflect and debrief, and we did that. What you had to write, and I, what I want to zero in on the writing part, number nine, that you, you had to tell me about it. What was, what was that? Somebody's talking about the praising. Did you have any problems doing with the praising? Anybody? I didn't use praising, I used grace. Very good. So, I had a little difficulty going in trying to find, you know, comparing and contrasting both articles, getting evidence for both articles. Okay. And that was my struggle. Okay. All right. And how did you approach that? How did you, why did you decide to do a raise? Uh, and we're talking about writing strategies here. Why did you decide to use a raise as opposed to praising? Honestly, I don't know. I just, I thought that raise was just better. I don't, I just, that's just what I like. I like using raise. Okay, very good. That's that, that personalized learning. How, how many of you guys think you made 100 on the, on the post test? Why do you suppose you made 100 on the post test? Because we use what the question was to use by getting the tile, stone, and language all in one. And explain your evidence and back and forth and supporting it. Very good. Okay, now, but we, let's talk a little bit about the, about the pretest. Because the pretest grades were not as good. Why do you suppose that your post test grades were better than your pretest? Because we had time to learn, learn it, and you taught us more about it. Okay. So, so why do you think that you had, uh, uh, we're getting all these hundreds here for the uh, post test as opposed to the pretest? I don't want to be. Who was able to feed off um, each other? Okay, very well. Oh, that's good. There. Say it again. Who was able to feed off each other? Did y'all hear when you said another one? Collaborate. Yes. What you think? Yeah. Yeah. Practice. What, what you're learning. And, 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 I, and I think what I hear you guys saying is, because you're Wednesday. We had Monday, we had Tuesday, and now we're at Wednesday. So even by Wednesday, based on what you did on the post-test, you were able, it's what I, I think I hear you saying, you were able to scaffold from day to day to add on to what you needed to, 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 to know uh, in order to be successful on your, on your post-test. What were some other, other uh, areas of your post-test that you felt like, uh, because you made 100, most of you, uh, on that, that you were able to do that? What was some other other than the writing parts? How it was structured. How it was structured. Okay. What else? Um, we, uh, while reading the question and answering them, we canceled out questions that didn't make sense or answers to. So, so you that use your good. test strategy mm -hmm. how to answer questions. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Anybody else want to add anything? Anybody else? Okay. Very well done, guys. Okay. Now, one other thing before we go. What could I have done in the pre-testing stage, or what did I do in the pre-testing stage that made you to be successful? Because I can't say or not, because most of you did make the hundred. So you had to be successful. Was it anything that I did to help you to be successful? Or is it anything that I could have done, maybe some of you who did not make a hundred, to, to, to be successful? Because I, I want to do, I want to get better at this. So you have to me. You, right? When we had the um, policy, we had to do our policy. You took us through each paragraph and then go on the thesis and all that. So you helped us with that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. basically, you did what you basically just gave us a whole bunch of writing stuff mm -hmm. for us to be able to write that. Okay. Modeling. You know, I always say that before I, before I give y'all anything, I model what it is that I want you to, to, to do. So the modeling, the, is that working? You think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of just guessing where to put stuff there. Okay. Very good.
Thank you very much for your time. Who was going to tell me about your I can statement? Um, we were supposed to take evidence from two articles and compare them and figure out which one most effectively used um, rhetorical devices to, like, get the clear picture of what they were trying to say about the times of the Civil Rights Movement. But we also had a 90-minute time limit on it. That's called our writing on demand. Okay? And we've not done a whole lot of that. And uh, one of the reasons, and I want to give you my rationale for that as well, because when we do EOC, guys, you are timed. And what we want to do, we want to teach you how to make time your friend instead of your enemy. How many of you guys ever tried to, when, when you were taking a test or whatever, you know you knew the, the information. But when you start, when it said test, it's like that you just froze and you could nothing would come. But you know you knew, you, I, I know this information, but I can't pull anything down because the word test. And then time. And you sit and you're looking at the time, probably on your computer or whatever you're doing, and it's just passing away and you've not started yet. And then you panic. Well, that's what this is about. Writing on demand. It's what you're given a specific topic or topics to choose from, to write on, and then you're timed on that. And at the end of that time, you say, time's up, and you've got to have uh, uh, been able to put down on paper enough um, what, or, or whatever the, the reader of that particular task that you're doing, they have to be able to see certain skills that uh, you should have been able to, to, to produce in that time span. Okay? So this was your first one for the semester. And that's why I am very uh, interested in the process of what happened there. Somebody start off, tell me, first of all, about, about uh, were you able to do that? in the 19th minute. Were you able to finish all four, because I think you're, most of you did three to four paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, talk to me about that process. Walk me through that. Um, I started off by reading both articles and taking notes of like certain things that they did. So like in one of the articles, whenever they used one of the rhetorical devices, I just like kind of jotted it down so I can remember it. And then I went back and I saw which one had like the most in it. And then I started off with a crazy for my introduction. And then as I went down to the body, I just pulled the evidence that I had jotted down and used it. Okay. Somebody else, tell me about your process. And what, what did you do? What would you think? And, and, and I'm actually, why did you do the crazy as opposed to the other writing strategies that, that you could have just, used? Because whenever you have the full evidence, it just makes sense to go ahead and use the crazy since you have to use the author's name, the title, the date of it's there. Right. Talk to me. What, tell me your, your, your process. Well, I struggled in the beginning of my process because I was trying to figure out how to start off my paragraph. So when we were doing the, um, the policies and stuff as a practice, I went back to that and did the first time on how to do my paragraph. Excellent. Talk to me. What was your process? What, what, what did you do when you first started this? Uh, well, what were you thinking? Did the time, did the time bother you? Did, did that have an effect on you? Okay, but were you able to finish? Okay, now what do you suppose, at what point did you begin to, to, to kind of get a hold of yourself and say, okay now, I'm timed on this thing and i got to show particular skills. How long did it take you to, to, to step into it, you think? I'd say being that we had already um, read the article before, Okay. I felt that they gave me the sense that I could do it in time. Okay, all right, very good, very well done. Okay, now what, what process did you use? The crazy. You did the crazy? Yes, okay. ma'am. Why? Because in the um, both articles, they talk about similar things, so it was able to relate mm -hmm. to both. Mm -hmm. That's good, that's good. Let's talk about your standards. T tell, me about your, tell me about your standards. What will, um, share your standards with me. That you that you had to relate to uh, as uh, what we were going to do for that for that day, Monday's day. Tell me about those standards. Um, they were mainly about like writing an argument that has claims in it, which using valid evidence to support your claims, and also using transitional words and phrases to link the claim and the counterclaim together to show that they did have a relationship, mm -hmm. and also um, writing a clear and logical essay that had the appropriate style and organization to it for the different audiences. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, now, when we, when we talk about that, how does knowing your standard for that day inform your learning target? 
And it shows you what you're supposed to know by the end of it. Yeah, yeah. And it helps like guide you through. So you already know ahead of time what it is that you're supposed to know. But your I can statement tells you, lets you know whether or not you can, will you be able to do this. And at the end of that, whatever work session that we do for that day is supposed to uh, give you the practice that you need in order to do the I can at the end of the day. After Monday's day, when you say, I can use evidence from the two text you text. On a, on a scale from 1 to 10, I want each one of you to tell me, where were you at the end of the day? On a scale of 1 to 10. 5. Why? Because you normally ask why, don't you? Mm -hmm. I say five because being that it was time, I felt like I didn't do my best. Okay. Alright. Scale one to ten. Um, I'd say probably seven to two. Just because in the beginning it took me a few minutes to like, comprehend the question. And I did finish it in the time, but I feel like it could have been a lot better because I just like, once I saw time was like slowly throwing like down, I was like, I gotta finish this. And just started like, packing information in there that probably wasn't as necessary. Okay. <laughs> what did you learn from that? Um, it's okay to take time to think. I don't know, probably like, if I probably would have went back and read the question a few more times and probably read the article one more time, I probably would have got it faster than what I did. Mm -hmm. And then, I would have more time to decide whether or not that information sounded right in the piece or not. Okay. All right. Um, could I have done something different than what I did this time to prepare you for a writing that you had to do that I couldn't have got you with? I think the main thing that threw people off on this one was when it talked about the effectiveness of the rhetorical devices in the thing because after class was over, I know a few people were talking about like they didn't quite understand what effectiveness of rhetorical devices were. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, so, so then I, I, I need to be a little bit clearer on unpacking the question itself. Mm -hmm. to make sure that you guys understand what the question is that they're asking you mm -hmm. so that you will be able to relate to, with it. That, now, this is adding up because that has been the problem, really, with, with everybody, basically, our, our, our young people, when they are asked to, to do questions, it's not that you don't know the answer, it's just that you don't know what it is that you're asked to do. So, it's that... It's hard to answer the question yeah, you don't understand. And not just hard, you can't. Yeah. Okay? So then I needed to have been a little bit more clearer in, um, and, and not so much that question, but even with anything that we're doing here, that I need to make sure that you guys understand the language, the terminology that's being uh, asked in the question. Thank you very much. Okay, now, so based on the fact that we had the, 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 the argumentative, and I called it proposal in a sense, okay, that you had to, to, to do, and uh, you had to choose a policy. What policy did you pick? Cell phone policy. Cell phone policy. What did you pick? Dress code. And what did you do? I did my own later start time. Later start times. Why did you? Why did you not pick something else? And you chose the one that you chose. What? Remember our, our vocabulary word extensive. What made your word your uh, policy extensive? You, you want to use your cell phone? So, like, we can use our cell phone to help us because we use our cell phone every day and we can use it to look up information better than we can this computer. So yeah. our cell phone is better than we can. Because we're always on them. Yeah, but does, does that make it better? Could fallacy. And remember, we're talking about ethos, pathos, and ethos. Does, is that logos to say that your cell phone is better than the computer to look up information? Because it's because you can't use it. We're going back to the policy. Because you can't use it in class. So which one do you think is better to use? Computer. Because you don't get in trouble, do you? Okay. Thank you. Very well done. Loved it. Put your stuff over here. All right. Okay. So here we are. All right. So you guys were given uh, Friday. Okay. You got your I can statement here. Uh, we have the standards. And what we're going to be talking about with you guys is understanding citing strong uh, evidence, uh, uh, strong evidence through uh, actually the text that you guys were given. So, and, and I think this is probably a good place to, to start with you guys first, since how you're Friday, okay? So, 
what you're talking about is actually what we're doing right now. Okay? We are reflecting, okay, which will make us stronger teachers and stronger students because of it. All right? So, we're talking about the entire unit, unit one. All right? And all through the unit, you know, we had texts that we had to, to, to encounter, that we had to uh, bring together for understanding or whatever. Uh, okay, so now I want you to talk to me about your I can statement. And I want this to be real and I want it to be authentic. Talk to me first, and then I'll ask you questions. To give, give me your thoughts on this entire unit. Yeah? Uh, we just learned how to set up an argument to essay, how to start it, learn how to write a thesis, and... Uh, uh, Okay, that's what, that's what we've done a week, okay. All right, now, based on what we're talking about, give me two things you learned because you, you guys are Friday, and, and of course the others will come up before you. You, you. you talked about the fact that, first of all, we, we understood what our role is in this culminating activity. Okay? We talked about the fact that you know you had to do your first uh, intro paragraph because we did it, got it, uh, writing with, with this. Okay? All right? we, we, we talked about what goes in that first intro paragraph, did we not? You, you said thesis statement just a few minutes ago, and then we talked about the body, then we talked about the conclusion. All right, based on all of that, give me two things you learned from what we did this week that you could take with you to another class or even a, a, another level, 12th grade, or to college. Give me two things. Basically, like, we learned about e threads and titles and logos and how to use that in, uh, in any type of form of writing. And that basically help you help you out in any type of subject. Mm hmm very well done. Mm -hmm. Yes. And appraising use it in the first paragraph to start your argument and then to be able to make your standpoint. Okay, now, and I hear you guys using, uh, you, you're saying crazy. Um, did somebody say the race? Okay, all right, what are you talking about, crazy? So you crazy if you ask, if someone asks you a question, but it doesn't have a question mark, and then the race is used if it's a question Okay. And when you start with the crazy, okay. and when you crazy, you gotta start off with the author's name, and then you gotta uh, the title, and the race, you gotta reset the question. Okay. So, so you guys, everybody else listening, they are pretty much kind of summing up what you're going to be sharing with us uh, uh, today. All right. So let's, now let's look at another. Okay. In the process of you doing this, what were your struggles? Trying to find evidence that had to do with the topic. Pretty much the same thing? Okay. All right. So so did you find it? Yeah. Okay. And and, and so were you able to, to cite or are you having issues with, with citing? No, no. Okay. Now let me ask you this. What could you have done better to help yourself be more effective all week long in each one of the, the processes that we did in order to get you to the point that you could understand and cite strong evidence uh, by uh, supporting your understanding. What could you have done? Or could you have done anything? I don't think I could have done anything because we did a lot of race and a lot of documents. Excuse me. Okay. Practice. We do a lot of practice in class. So we do practice on these, like crazy, the race, so that's how we got Okay. Now let me ask you this, what could I have done better to help you be more effective? Help me out here. And I want y'all to be honest. I don't know, I don't think there's anything you could have done. Because you gave us a lot of documents, I think we just have to learn to do it on our own. Okay. Can we concur on that, all of us? Very well done. Thank you very much. We have talked about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now we're going to talk about Thursday. What's your I can statement for Thursday? I can demonstrate at least 80% efficiency or a higher on a unit one post test assessment. Okay. We're looking for growth. That's what pre test and post test measure growth. Okay. So even though you might not have gotten 80% proficiency, okay, but some of your growth was much, much, much wider or higher than some other people who actually made it 80 and who actually made 100. 
some people made, I had some 90s on the pretest, okay? And then those people went on to make hundreds, whereas maybe one of you guys not sent it. One of you guys didn't pass it the first time. Maybe you didn't pass it the last time, but you had the highest measure. Oh. And that's what the pretest, that's why the pretest is so important. Okay, so I think you guys did real well with that. All right, and so let's talk about our standard. T tell, me, tell me about the standard, because you know, you, you, you have to know your standard before you actually read the book. And that's what we want to start each day with, the standard, so that you would know what it is that you're learning for that day, because that's what the standard tells you. What is it that I'm learning that day? And go talk. Well, standard, one of the standards was cite strong and through thorough, thorough text, textual evidence to support, analyze of what the text says, explicit, as well as inferential. That's okay. Yeah. Drawn from the text, including in, yeah, determining where the text leaves the matter uncertain. And I, and I love that because you guys, what you did, you, you piggybacked off each other. You know, you kind of helped them out there. And that's what it's really all about here, guys, in this, in this session here. And I, I'm, what I'm doing, I'm beginning to see some scaffolding from when they talked about, this group here talked about collaboration. That's exactly what you do. You help each other out when you're in the group because that's what a group means, one. Okay? You, 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 you're all talking about the same thing, and I love the way that you guys did that. Tell me, what, tell me one thing. One thing that you learned from you said, because you said from from my teaching that helped you more than anything when you when you started taking that post test. What what came to your mind as you began to take that post test? And, and, and to give, you can give me any any sections of it. Let's let's talk about the writing part. What came to mind when you got to that writing part that you had learned? Well, you can use a crazy or just like mm -hmm. okay. So which one did you use? Okay, all right. I use crazy. Okay, and so why did you use the crazy? Crazy is a push the race. For me, the race is easier for me to get my thoughts out and stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. Crazy is like, it helps me like, know the authors and why they go 